I'm currently waiting to see if I got accepted into this writing course. I think I actually have the entirety of the story planned out. I'm not doing better at this. I <laughs> but I just want to like briefly talk about rejection. Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. If you're new, my name is Olivia and I'm about to jump into my first ever NaNoWriMo. I'm giving very much like Adam family vibe today. <laughs> so just jumping off from where it ended uh, last week, if you're new, this is part four of this little short series of Preptober. I've done three videos so far. Last week I was working heavily on outlining and I did a lot of character work. I need to still figure out the finish the outline for the end of this story. I haven't had as much time to work on it since my last video just because life and such. So I'm going to do that today and I'm going to kind of take it back to a screenwriting approach that I have with plotting which is using cue cards and like just listing out all the events I have on cards and kind of visually laying it out for myself. I'm really having a hard time just typing it and figuring it out which I'll take you through as I do it. I'm also, <laughs> this is a non NaNoWriMo update but I still think it's important to include for writers. I'm currently waiting to see if I got accepted into this writing course. It's very competitive to get in, it's for screenwriting, and it's essentially just to work with a really amazing showrunner in Canada who's like a really big deal in Canadian comedy. So I submitted my writing samples, and today I find out if I get in or if I didn't get in. Um, obviously, most likely I won't just because it's very competitive. And I debated on including this because A, it doesn't have anything to do with Proctober, but Part of this channel and why I created it was to give like a realistic look at being an emerging writer, both for novel and screenwriting. Yes, if you're new, I also, I went to school for screenwriting. Uh, I wanted to include that today because uh, today I might be celebrating a little victory or I'm going to have to deal with rejection, which is more likely and very common. And, you know, talking about how I, how I cope with that and what it feels like. <laughs> Or it'll be a victory, even though I think I'll probably talk about rejection anyway. But yeah, so today I'm also going to find out that alongside working on my novel. So I'll let you know when I get that email. Hopefully I will get it sooner rather than later. <laughs> Before I get started on writing, I'm going to go get a coffee. I'm going to go to Starbucks, okay? Don't make fun of me. I'm going to get the pumpkin spice. I'm going to get a little treat because, again, either today we're celebrating a little victory or we're dealing with rejection. And either way... I think that deserves a snack, so <laughs> let's get started on today. I'll take you through what I'm doing as I'm doing it, and uh, fingers crossed for results. But yeah, I just want to be realistic with everything, so we'll see. All right, let's get some coffee and a snack. Okay, we are we are back. We're gonna start. We're gonna start writing and. I have my cue cards, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm or going to organize different sections, Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, Act 4, and under each act, just in cue cards, just lay out what's going to happen. So like right now, I really just need to figure out the oval, overall arc of the story. Hopefully that'll start helping me look at it on the bigger scope of things and less specific. Don't be wrong, that is so important, but I'm not there yet, and I think that's the stuff that I love to do, so I need to like stop myself from doing that. I have a lot of the plot planned. I know what the I want the climax to be, it's just the leading up to it and the coming down from it is what I really need to focus on. The act three, act four is really where I need to figure some stuff out. So let's get started on that. So part of this is also helping me like figure out where the act breaks are. So like right now I think I have most of act one done and I'm moving on to act two. But once I really lay out act two, then I'll be able to really see if that's where the act break really is. Or if certain things should mold into other, into the different act. I have act one laid out and kind of what I believe everything that needs to happen majorly in that there. But I'm going to continue on with act two and then that'll tell me if that um, anything needs to change or move over into any different act. But yeah, let's keep going. Just want to give a little update on the writing. And yes, I am watching my favorite writer YouTuber, um, Christiane Jones. I'm getting better at catching myself falling into the same habits of like wanting to go nitty gritty and detailed. Like definitely my cue cards have 
maybe more information on each of them as I set out for them to have but I am discovering different things in the story which is leading me to the end so it, this is a way more helpful approach as opposed to what I was doing last week with I was just getting way too detailed and like having the cue cards and being like this is how much I can literally fit on this card is helping me stay in line so I can work through the story faster. I am wanting to fall into that habit again, but the limitation of what I can put on the cue card is helping me stay focused on what I set out to do today. So yeah, let's continue writing. Okay, scratch what I said in the last clip. I'm not doing better at this. I <laughs> so this is what I have right now. Like act one, act two. I'm really not great at this in this format. I just, I think I'm not used to stories expanding so long. I'm used to screenwriting format. This is really difficult. I'm having a really hard time adjusting to this, but we shall continue on. I will probably end up doing like this because I'm just writing like multiple scenes and I'm like, I don't need that. I'm just making it too much for myself right now. So I need to get better. Adam at that so uh, let's continue <laughs> hi sorry it's the next day <laughs> I did continue writing a bit yesterday. My focus was just like all over the place, but I'm gonna do a bit of writing now. I just wanted to check in because I did hear back if I got into that class and unfortunately I did not and I got rejected, which is okay. But I just wanna like briefly talk about rejection as a writer, but I also know that a lot of people here are, are for Preptober specifically. That's what a lot of the views I've been getting is for that and for the NaNoWriMo journey. And this is definitely like a, it's for writers in general, but it's a screenwriting thing. So if you're not interested, just go ahead to this timestamp and where I will continue on writing and we'll talk about that. Just in case you're not interested in that, then I don't wanna take up your time. It was very nice in my rejection email. They did say that I had like a really amazing application, encouraged me to apply again. So I will apply again when it comes up in the new year, but I just wanna talk about receiving rejection and how um, I kind of am learning to manage it along the way. I obviously am a new writer, but luckily in studying writing, rejection is something that they kind of prepare you for and talk to you about in school. Also my undergrad, I did theater and was acting. So there's a lot of rejection in that too. So it is something I'm a little bit used to and something that I've learned along the way is to not take it personally. And as probably annoying as that is to hear over and over again, it, it genuinely is so true. There's so much that goes into account. You know, like I couldn't, I probably didn't get in cause like I'm sure there are funnier writers than me. They're also accumulating a room and want different voices and perspectives. And they could have had a lot of people have similar writing styles and background as me, or I just didn't fit in with the group that they were kind to start trying to piece together for the story that they wanted to create. So there's a whole bunch of other reasons. It's nothing to do with the lack of talent of anyone's writing. I mean, don't get me wrong, my script could have been shit, but I was pretty, I was actually quite confident in the scripts I was handing in. I have had them read a lot of times by writers. So I am like confident in them, in them and they did compliment my scripts. I just think it wasn't my time and it wasn't meant for me right now, but I will apply again in the new year. In terms of dealing with it, like I know last night, I, I was definitely disappointed, don't get me wrong. I wasn't like, all right, next thing, you know? I allowed myself, I got the email about seven o'clock last night and I allowed myself to do nothing for the rest of the night and just kind of feel bad and not feel great about it. And it was disappointing, but you know, I wanted to let myself feel the feels of that and then wake up tomorrow and know that there's gonna be other opportunities. I didn't even know this was an opportunity till three weeks ago. So it really does happen really fast. So. You never know when something's gonna show up. So I'm just really trying to remember that when I'm moving forward in this career is that opportunities are gonna come out of nowhere and they're to come randomly. It's gonna be disappointing when I don't get it, but rejection is definitely part of it. And unfortunately it's a reality of this industry. So, but I think it's fair to acknowledge when you're disappointed. And I think the more that we get used to rejection, dealing with it, it gets easier over time. I have a lot of friends who are actors and like now they just kind of submit auditions and they're like, well, we'll see. And don't really expect anything from it. Not to say that they think they did a terrible job, but it's just, it's so much of it is out of your hands and it's the same thing with writing. So. I think just allowing yourself the space and time to feel the disappointment and know that like over time it will get easier dealing with the rejection and the time you need to kind of recoup and jump back from that, it's gonna get shorter over time. Something like this, if it happened to me two years ago, I probably wouldn't need it a few days. 
to recover and feel like I'm not failing. You can only stay in that pit for so long and I think because I've dealt with it a fair few amount of times with writing, with acting, um, I'm getting better at coping with it. But that took time. All, all this to say, like, it takes time. Be kind with yourself. It does get easier. And don't take it personally. And unfortunately, it is just a part of this industry. On the bright side of me not getting into this, I would have had to do this, like, that course on top of NaNoWriMo. So now I can just focus fully on NaNoWriMo as originally planned and give that all my time. So there are always upsides to look at. So that's going to be my upside is now I get to spend more time with you. I really hope that you're not sad about that. <laughs> but I'm gonna get back into writing. As you saw, I was working on these um, cue cards. Again, I just what my issue was yesterday, I'm being too detail oriented. I have not even finished act two. I haven't gotten to the third and fourth act yet. Like I just have not because I'm being too detailed with it and I really need to get better at that. So I'm going to lay all these out on the floor and once again, try to <laughs> compact my ideas so I can just get through through the whole thing because this is actually really helping me continue on the story and find new things and I'll check in with you at the end of the day to let you know how today went. Also yes, I am starting late. It's like five o'clock so I'm really only working this evening because I was, I had social plans today so oops. It's okay, it was my day off and I go back to work tomorrow so. <laughs> today had to be a balance of social life and writing. Anyway, I'm just gonna get into writing. what it is about a whiteboard but just sitting at a whiteboard and writing it out no way I can erase something really quick if it doesn't work just helps like I just I figured it out it did kind of the rest of the plot very bare very what I wanted just all out on a whiteboard point form I don't know why this leads me to adding strenuous detail but it does but a whiteboard I can just hash it out I don't I don't get it <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to convert all the whiteboard stuff onto cue cards. I think I actually have the entirety of the story planned out. The line in which Act 3 will merge into Act 4 is a little unclear right now, but that's okay when I get into more detailed um, work within it, then I'll figure that out. That also might be like the reality of how much time I've given myself and how much time I've uh, had to put in this month to Preptober. A lot of this will kind of be flying by the seat of my pants, but um, I think I kind of have the whole map of the story laid out now, which is really good and really encouraging. So I'm feeling good about that. It's very, very basic kind of what I have thus far, but I feel good on that. I think over the next few days, I will start to look into my outline a little bit more in detail. But honestly, I think my first draft is going to be a bit more uh, in between like a plotter and a pantser than I really intended. But I think that's okay just because of how much time I was actually able to provide um, preparing for it this month. So I'm, I'm not nervous about that. I think it's going to be exciting to do a lot of discovery writing the first draft. For the most part, that is essentially what I've got thus far. Um, anything else I do will be off camera. And that is this week's video for you. Thank you so much for joining along in um, the Preptober. Next week will be our final Preptober week. And then we will finally jump into the weekly vlogs of NaNoWriMo itself. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm very nervous. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for following along on this journey. As always, please let me know how you're doing in the comments with your Preptober and with your NaNoWriMo throughout. A lot of you have already commented and I've replied back saying keep me posted. I genuinely mean it. Like I really want to know. So thank you for those who have, for those who have felt comfortable enough to. I really love hearing about how you're doing. Feel free to keep up with me on social media as well, on Instagram and uh, TikTok. And please like this video if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up with everything. I post here every Sunday. Happy writing 
and uh, take care of yourself and I'll see you next week. Bye.